So persistent post-surgical pain is a phenomenon that um, has been around for ages. I think everybody knows that a patient who had surgery and, and now has chronic pain afterwards, but it really is a relatively new topic in literature. And the first paper that was published was back in 1989, um, which is a little uh, scary when you think about um, how uh, much of an epidemiological nightmare this is. Um, it's defined by the International Association for the Study of Pain as uh, pain that lasts greater than three months. That is a little bit in contrast to the definitions that McCree and Davies formed in 1999, where it states that it needs to persist for more than two months and that you rule out any other reasons for having that type of pain after surgery, like infection or other issues. The causes for the transition from acute to chronic pain is uh, the golden chalice. It's the, it's the quest for the Holy Grail. Um, we don't know the exact answer to that. We have ideas. We know that central sensitization occurs. We know that initially in acute pain, there's a mixture of nociceptive, inflammatory, and neuropathic pain. At some point after three months, neuropathic pain tends to predominate, and a lot of these patients start describing symptoms of neuropathic pain. Um, but why and how that uh, occurs is still a mystery, and uh, that's why it's that proverbial Pandora's box. Patients who are at risk for developing persistent post-surgical pain uh, can be seen from a preoperative standpoint as people who have some psychological comorbidities, things like depression, anxiety, um, people who are termed catastrophizers, um, these people are more prone uh, to developing persistent post-surgical pain coping strategies that might not, might not be present in those patients. Um, also, people who have problems with uh, obesity and sleep um, have a higher risk of developing persistent post-surgical pain as well. And finally, people who have chronic pain preoperatively are at risk of developing persistent post-surgical pain. That may be because of issues related to the chronic pain state that they're in already, that they're primed for sensitization, and that they already have um, a number of opioids on board that might make it a little bit more difficult to treat acute pain. We know that if you don't control their acute pain right after surgery, that they're at a higher risk as well of developing persistent post-surgical pain, which puts the onus on us as practitioners to make sure that, that they have a good perioperative experience.